All right, so I figured I'd do a uh, kind of end of project summary review of where I got to with the rope data structure. Um, maybe starting out, I'll just give a demo of the data structure. So here is the main procedure. Um, th this first bit here is just basic some profiling setups and so nothing to see there, but basically there's entry point. Um, I'm just creating a rope at the moment and then I'm inserting text and it can be small amounts, large amounts, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, you know, I'm saying ropes are easy peasy and then I said not, right? But we're inserting that not back in the middle. I'll go ahead and print that rope out to the screen. Um, I have each node wrapped in parentheses kind of shown there. And then I'm going to delete most of the middle and then I put it back kind of bit by bit. And then uh, just to try it out, I delete the E again and I put it back again and then I print it one more time, right? And that's actually not quite right anymore. Now the rope looks a little different. So running that, we're going to do Odin run. And it takes a little bit of time to start up because of all the, the profiling is turned on. But here's our first guy where you know, we're saying ropes are not easy peasy. And then I go through here, and this is again where I cut it, you know, basically I cut it at the two, right? And I went for 12 characters, which I think took me out, I'm thinking to that E, I can't remember. Um, we can look at that. Yeah. So, um, so it took me out to the east. Basically, everything inside that little block had been deleted. So I had, you know, row, uh, row easy peasy. Um, then I kind of put it sequentially, put it back in right here. So then we can go down to the data structures. Uh, I have a rope as the top level item. Now I was thinking that I would put in um, like some allocator pools. So it would have an allocator. It would have. Um, some dynamic memory, like a, it would have a stack for, for done traversals. And then it would also have uh, tracing stacks. There'd be two different stacks that are just basically pre-allocated onto this thing as like dynamic arrays. But basically I have like a fi fixed capacity. Let's say this thing is allowed to be, I don't know, 64 elements high or something, I don't know. So we'll just set it up where it pre-allocates with a 64 element pair of stacks or two of them. And then also it has its own allocator built into it. Um, so that's all stuff that I probably would do. <laughs> Haven't touched it. All right. You know, I was just trying to just figure the thing out at all. Um, I, I came up with this idea of a trace. We'll come back to the trace in a second, actually. So what I've got is down here, I've got a node, right? And a node might either be a branch or it's a leaf. Um, if it's a leaf, that's just an alias for a string. And then if it's a branch, it has a weight, which is how much the left subtree uh, has in it. And that would be um, both, like everything down the entire left tree, but like it's child's right tree also, right? So that's the full left subtree. Um, and then, you know, it has a pointer to the left and right nodes. Uh, I just aliased off position, right? This is your cursor position. Um, and then notice that there, there's no parent pointer here. Um, I, I wrote this three or five or seven times. I don't remember how many now. And I put parent pointers in there at one point, and it was just because I didn't really understand what I was doing. Ah, get thing is getting annoying. Um, the parent pointers were causing me grief, and so I was like, I'm going to get rid of parent pointers. But then you realize you, you've got to traverse down to the bottom of the tree, and you need to go back up, right? to do some cleanup operations and I have no parent pointer. I can't go back up, right? And I don't want to traverse back, you know, keep traversing from the top of the tree to the, just the parent, you know, that per parent that seemed inefficient. So it's like, well, I'll make like a little pro procedure that does a trace, right? And so uh, the entry on a trace originally was just the node that was on the tr trace and if it was a left child or not. And this was just kind of a convenience, right? I, I later found because of this, I had to put like sometimes I get a right, uh, right procedure, or sorry, a right node. It's basically this guy was nil, um, but this didn't know what to do with it because it always produced, produ it always produced a valid leaf. And 
So that kind of broke my model. I think doing this again, I would not do the trace. I would probably go back and try the parent pointers. Um, you know, if, especially now that I better understand how the whole thing works. Uh, this this was a neat idea, but it was like a fair amount of logic. I mean, to, to give you an idea, where is it? Let's go find it. So, so here's the trace, right? And it um, it's going to return that trace and then where it got to in the cursor. And so it make you know it allocates an array for itself, and again, nothing in this this whole project really has very good memory management right now. I was just trying to fiddle around with this to to get it to work at all. But essentially, it just runs down you know basically kind of a stack based approach, just building a stack of like I went you know I went left right here, then I went right, then I went right again, now I went left. And then I went right, and then that's the that's the leaf, right? So then I can walk back up that tree back the same way I came, and do any kind of work I need to do. But I mean, it was I don't know wherever that is, two ninety five to two fifty. It was fifty lines, right? And it, it it was fiddly, right? And especially this this edge case here of like I'm I'm on a right child where it's technically empty. Um. I didn't much care for this, and, and like I said, I, I would have a go again um, not doing this tracing function, because I use this a lot. This gets used everywhere. Um, it's not wildly expensive, but it does have a cost, and so maybe I can pull that up real quick. Um, so I can bring this over, right? And so this is um, this is the, the profiling of what was going on. So you know, we're basically inserting, you know, you make a leaf, right? And it's like a one um, microsecond to do that. Now, ideally, I have um, some buffers and things like that ready to go so that I'm, I'm working in some into a buffer. I'm not just allocating on the spot all the time, right? Again, this was kind of a toy more than anything else. Uh, the first trace is pretty slow, right? He's 1.1 1 .1, uh, microseconds. As time goes on, right, the traces can get, you know, oh, that's a weight, eh, 250, 300, 500 nanoseconds. It, it's, I, I think the cost, like, relative to having this happen, and you notice it's like on an insert, right, or sorry, it happens on a split. Um, It happens on an append, and I use, like, insert uses a split and an append, so I just did two traces. Um, now this trace is, I think, on the right tree, so it's always going to be a smaller one than this one, right? This is the full tree. But you can just see these little yellow traces that are just everywhere, right? And I don't think I need them. So, cool idea. It seemed like it wasn't great. Um, I did do, you know, what was interesting is, like, there's a lot of recursive functions in this tree, and I, I, I did play with, in some places, trying to get rid of them. So I wrote um, a stack version of, you know, getting rid of heights. Now, the key here is I had an allocated dynamic list. And I think that's probably where most of my cost came was from just allocating that array. If I, again, if the rope itself had a pre-allocated stack that I could just use as I needed it, uh, maybe this wouldn't be an issue. But, like, the height would reliably go to, you know, from whatever, you know, call it three, four, five hundred um, nanoseconds, it would jump up to like one to four microseconds, which was kind of crazy. Um, so a surprise there. I don't know. Again, I think reallocation might solve that issue, right? And it's a tree is not going to get too tall, at least not in theory. Um, what else I got here? So, you know, operations seem, I mean, if we zoom out a little bit, they're five, sometimes 10 microseconds. Um, yeah, four, 11, two, six, five. There's, there is a lot of recursion here, right? And a lot of this is uh, essentially, I wrote this as basically an AVL tree, you know, for all intents and purposes, you can see it's like updating and rebalancing itself as it goes. Um, that was super important. I've, I hadn't really worked with trees before this and 
one of the hardest things was like if you create a wackadoodle tree that's not following the rules um you get wackadoodle answers and so yeah that was that was a lesson um yeah so that, that's basically the trace and like I say it's for all the work we did which really admittedly wasn't much right we're 68 microseconds now this doesn't include the prints if the prints you know printing the console this thing would just be ridiculous in, in, in fact just to show you we're, we're gonna do that we're gonna put that back in so we'll go um okay so i've got those turned on right i'm gonna save and then go run it and give it a second there and now i've got a tr basically a new trace that's got the uh the prints in it and, and check this out so all the work we were doing you know in the beginning there right so we're doing a fistful of of inserts and that's what is that like 45 well from call it 10 to call it 35 microseconds right then we're like 250 just to do that one print right there um and the print of the print right so this is the i just motivated a wrapper function just so you could see specifically the actual print call right so i'm, I'm just tracing basically into the core libraries for there all of my work here like gathering up the nodes and doing all this stuff and this is like just cobbled together so it's not super fancy but all of that work you know 12 12 microseconds printing to the console 250 you know and it really shows just how much how expensive printing is right so so there's all that other work where i'm deleting stuff and then redoing a bunch of inserts and again we're going from uh wherever this is i get a time time marker um i don't know like 304 303 to 340 so again like 30 you know i'm taking like 30 but i'm spending 100 to print it so kind of kind of interesting to see right you just don't expect print to be so expensive but it is um so let's see here so maybe i just switch to that again and what my notes here of things i might would do different so i mean the good news out of all of this is i've got a working rope um well working right because it's really has, it needs a memory strategy so it's just totally a cobbled together memory wise right now um my thought was is i would give this like a week or so to just kind of digest and then i wanted to do it again from scratch i'm gonna probably rip out a bunch of stuff um particularly all the tracing um one of the things i'd really like to have is the ability to traverse forward in leaves but also to traverse backwards in leaves um that like today i can traverse a span so i can say i want to go here and i want to go forwards but i always have to start from the left and work right and i was thinking once or twice it'd be really nice to jump backwards so i might would do it again where i've got some iterators set up that are a you know especially having the parent pointers that'd be a lot easier to do um so i mean you know i learned the basics of binary trees out of all this i learned abl trees and ropes um I finally learned how nasty red black tree is you know you hear oh they're not going to ask you that on an interview question well i mean i never really knew what a red black tree was and like so i didn't have context you know now i do because actually one of my iterations was trying to implement the uh i think clr the the white algorithm book actually the the red algorithm book that one's not too hard because it's a recursive version but the the white book has the the stack based version and like I look at that thing and it melts my face, right? It doesn't help that everything's named like X, right? So you have no idea what you're looking at and you have to really study it hard to kind of get a gist. But that one, I don't know that I could come up with the stack based version without, you know, lots of long, long hours of thinking. So yeah, red black trees, I came to realize are pretty nasty. You know, again, the, the recursive one's not as bad. Um, Again, the trace uh, trace versus parent pointers, you know, doing this again, I would definitely try out parent pointers. And, and I want to keep, you know, one of my notes to myself, I want to keep some of these traces because I'd like to go back and see, you know, when I rewrite the procedure, and granted, it's not going to be a one-to-one, -one, but if I go rewrite the procedure where it's actually just traversing via parents, how much faster am I? Because I, I do think I'll actually get faster because I'm going to knock out all those three, 400, you know, nanosecond queries. Um, 
you know, the cost is I've got basically a third more pointers to deal with, and that's kind of annoying. Um, one of the things, so, uh, yeah, do, doing it again. So my notes there were, I didn't pull out pencil and paper until I was like 30 hours into the project, right? And I mean, that was dumb. It was like really dumb. So I sat down and, oh, right here. So, so I actually wrote and it's like, I'm going to find it. So it's like I write ropes, right? And it's our nil. Sorry, the focus isn't going to work probably very well to you, but it's like then ropes are, then it's ropes are easy, ropes are easy peasy, right? And I'm, I'm kind of looking at this to see when it's got to rebalance to try to understand this. And it's like, okay, this one has a height of uh, basically zero. That one has a height of two. So now we're going to rotate, right? And so we do. We Hopefully you can see that okay. And then I do this middle insert of saying they're not easy. And, you know, everything's good, right? Now we're height of two versus one, so we're not going to rotate just yet. And then I wanted to delete this guy down in the middle. This was incredibly helpful. And I feel like after I wrote this, I was, I mean, granted, I'd spent 30 hours screwing around with this thing, so, so there's that. But after I wrote this, all of a sudden things got a lot clearer. Um, so maybe you want to start with the paper, like on hour zero that would be way smarter um other things is i didn't pay attention to you know when i'd seen someone talk about it or maybe an article i don't remember but they're saying like an insert is a split in a concat and a delete is two splits in a concat and to you know i could, I could show that in the code real quick because i didn't really take that to heart and i wasted a lot of time here and i mean like a lot of time i was writing these insert functions all by themselves, like just crazy. So, so basically, this was like if you have an empty, you know, empty rope, then we'll make this guy the rope. Otherwise, I'm going to split it. And the way I set up my split, basically, it only will split if there's something worth splitting. So then, um, I stick this thing onto the rope, right? So, so I am now on. I've split the rope at the place I wanted to do my insert. I put my um, my new node right there. And then if that right tree actually had something in it, right? So, so, so you might be splitting after the end of the rope, right? Which means you're not splitting. So then we're just appending to the end and then concatenating them together. So that's that check right there. And we're just putting the two, or sorry, this append puts me on the end of the first rope. This concatenates the two ropes back into one rope. And then I rebalance it, right? So that's, that's the entirety of insert. And it really is. There's the split. There's the concat. Right, that there's the nuance of like you're actually inserting the text and rebalancing it, but you know details. Um, the delete, same thing. I'm gonna take and split in the beginning, so like this is the the cursor start that I'm gonna cut at, and then I'm gonna split it again over here, right? And I want to delete everything in the middle, um, and then I'm gonna concatenate the left most subtree, or I guess your your left, my right. I'm gonna take my yeah, I'm gonna use my side. I take the leftmost tree and the rightmost tree, and I concatenate those two together. And then I'm going to just basically delete the middle tree, right? And that's this guy here. So I'm going to just get rid of that one. I don't need it. Uh, notice I'm not actually doing that. Again, you know, the memory thing. Um, but that's that's delete. Those procedures were stupid easy, and I actually was I wrote them out completely. So that was not good. Um, so then, let's see, what else? I'm trying to think if there's anything other interesting that I learned about this thing. Um, so in my notes here, yeah, doing it again, um, definitely like all the work goes into split. In fact, the, the concat procedure is like, it's super simple. It's like three lines of code or something. Um, the split procedure is like 75, maybe a hundred lines. I don't remember, but it, it's like splitting a tree and cleaning up the mess you made when you split it was by far the hardest part. Like, that was it. You know, after you split it and you got it cleaned up where it's, you know, a tree that's following the rules, essentially, like, because you could end up where nodes that were, like, you know, you split it and then you've got, like, the, the left and the right pointers and, like, maybe, because the rule is, like, you should have a left. If you have nothing on the right but something on the left, that's okay. But you can't have something on the right and not on the left. And so sometimes you end up, where after splitting it, I've got a right node or something like that and I need to, like, hop it over to being the left of after the split, things like that. 
Um, so definitely that's where all the effort should go in. Um, and that's where this keeps you straight so that you're not, you know, making a disaster. Um, I, in fact, like when I go to do this again, I'm going to much more carefully map out the cases because one of the things that I kept finding is I would, uh, it, it was maybe haphazard. I was a little haphazardly walking back up the tree and it was like, if I thought of the case, I'd handle it, but then I'd crash. And I was just like moving my cursor one character to the next and all of a sudden like the trees would like do this, right? Because I wasn't handling one of my edge cases correctly. And so, and, and the tough thing here is the tree probably needs to be, in fact, my tree's probably not deep enough. Like I probably need to be three to four levels deep, right? And if I have my test tree. And mine, mine, I think, what is it? Uh, two levels deep, three levels deep, maybe sometimes. And that, I don't feel like that's enough to really see kind of all the branches things can take. Um, so that's, yeah, that was probably the other thing I would do again, that I will do again, for sure. Um, I wouldn't doubt that my code still has logic errors, to be honest, but, you know, it was a, it was a good learning experience. To, to put it in perspective, um, learning the rope, I, granted, I did it dumb, and I've never worked with binary trees before, but that was like 40 hours of work, right? And so then I have something resembling not good, but basics of a rope, 40 hours, right, for me. I might be able to do it again in like three, right? Um, but I went from not having an idea what a gap buffer was to writing a gap buffer and testing it out and actually having something that like it legit does have a memory strategy, that whole process of everything, including building the tests, was four hours. So that gives you kind of a difference. You know, I guess I am me, so, you know, you might not have the same hour ratios, but like, you know, at some level, it probably is like a 10 to 1 of complexity, right? The gap buffer was like under 100 lines of code. My rope is is 500 lines. No, no, that's not true because I have a utilities page. Um, so it's 500 lines for the main rope and like another 100 lines of just utilities like printing and you know things like that that were the helpers to get it done. So I mean, it's not that it's that much more, but it's just much more fiddly than the gap buffer was. You know, the gap buffer is fiddly in that you're making sure you're moving the gap correctly, but it was not a big deal as far as like, it just wasn't that hard. I mean, to show, because I could show that gap buffer. I think I have it on here. Um, let me switch the screen again. So, so in the gap buffer, I mean, your data structure is that, right? I just have a buffer and I have, where's the gap start and where's it end? And I drew myself a picture and this was the only picture I needed, right? So I have this thing which says, I've got, you know, this piece in front of the gap and then this stuff afterwards. And I might say my cursor is here and I wanna, or sorry, the, the gap, the buffer gap, ugh. the buffer starts there at the V and my cursor is over here, right? And I've got to basically move to put the put the gap where that is, right? So here's my cursor. So then this is kind of the pre-state and here's the post-state, right? So gap is before the cursor. I looked at this, I sat down and kind of fiddled with it and then got it put together. And then same thing as the opposite case, right? And like, literally, I made these two pictures while I was coding it up. That was it, I was done. It took me a little while. Um, you know, there's like maybe some reallocation optimizations, you know, and I didn't really look into that much, but that's like literally it versus like this thing I'm like, you know, having to pull out paper. And I, again, this is nowhere near enough. I probably should have like three or four pages where I've carefully mapped out all the details to get the, the rope up and running correctly. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, oh, one of the other things I did is I actually wrote just a simple, like dead simple AVL tree. I, um, probably the hardest lesson I, I learned out of this that I did, had no idea, um, was most tree structures expect a, uh, they expect a fixed key, right? If the key is five, the key is five and it's not mutating. And in fact, a, like a, a bunch of really cool data structures, you know, like concurrent friendly and all this kind of stuff I was, I was looking into, you know, that probably, that was like a side branch. I'm like, you know, trying to run before I can walk. Probably cost me five or 10 hours of headed down that route. But, um, you know, you get into them and you're starting to study them and all of a sudden you realize like you cannot mutate the keys, 
right? And and a rope by definition is mutating the keys, right? Because if I insert something to the left of the cursor, where the cursor, sorry, if I insert something in the middle of the rope, all the weights have to be updated up the tree. Um, and that's something that um, it, it just made it way harder, right? Because you're you're not dealing with constants, and I didn't appreciate that. And so so going back, writing just a simple dumb AVL tree, right? And it's just like my key is an integer, my value is an integer because I really don't care. This thing helped me understand how to get rotates and balances or rebalance put together. And once I could rotate and rebalance, right, then it was a lot easier to go do the rope, which is now getting all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you were to ever try a rope, write one of these guys first, like get, get the AVL tree just with numbers. And once you have the AVL tree, going to the rope becomes way, way easier. Um, yeah, I think that's more or less it. I'm, I tried all kinds of things. I looked at some libraries here and there. Um, you know, here's, I think, pieces of the red black tree and this was like literally like copying like I didn't I don't even feel like I understand this thing right and I did my best but you know I got through this thing and just decided it was I, I was copying code I didn't understand it and I didn't like that right and yeah I, I like I like that I can understand the AVL tree Better. Like I actually understand what's going on there. It was the red black tree, and I think that's just a time thing. I just haven't spent the time to invest to understand AB, uh, red blacks. But you know, we only have so much time in the day, and I wasted a week's worth of nights trying to. Or I should say waste. It was a good. It was a good week's worth of nights, right? I mean, I learned stuff. It was fun, so I can't complain too much. But that's that's my adventure with ropes. So you know, hopefully, you like it.